Welcome back to Catalan Soccer guys, I'm Catalan Ben and today we are talking about one of our most requested videos that is playing out from the back. If this is the kind of coaching content that you're looking for, then please consider subscribing. Let's get straight into the video. The first part to developing your team to play out from the back is individual technique. Your players need to be able to receive and send the ball comfortably to allow you to play out from the back in any system. So you can have all the players moving in the right places and doing the right things, but if their technique lets them down, you will still give the ball away. You will still struggle to play out from the back. To make sure that they're building the strongest technique possible for passing, then you need to make sure that kids are training and practicing away from their sessions, not just on the football pitch with you, but when they're at home too. The more repetitions they get in and the more often they're receiving and sending the ball, the better they will get over a short period of time. So the first part to it is build technique and get players playing as many passes as possible. Now, I know that some players can find passing quite boring. So make sure that the first 10 to 15 minutes of your session is a high number of passes, high repetition, get it out of the way nice and early, and then go on to some more fun stuff for your sessions. But make sure you're not skipping over it and don't expect kids who can't receive or can't send the ball effectively to be able to play out from the back. The next part to playing out from the back is routines. Now, routines are set patterns that your players will repeat to make sure they understand movements, timings, and getting to the right places at the right moment. Now, I'm very aware that football isn't a pattern and it's not a routine and it's not the same every time, but by building patterns that they understand and by working through certain passing routines, you make sure that kids are at least doing the basics and getting into the right positions, which is a really good foundation to start playing out from the back. As they get better at it and as you improve, coaching it as they improve playing it you will start to be more dynamic things will flow a little bit more and it'll be more organic but what you need to start with is building some very simple routines that kids can follow a player goes to here b player goes to here when b receives the ball this is what c does and those little routines will really help it cement to kids exactly where to go and when so for example, here's a really simple routine of the goalkeeper playing the ball out to the left back. As the left back receives the ball, a midfielder moves into the channel to try and receive down the line. And another midfielder drops a little bit deeper to create an angle to receive the pass in the center. That trigger and that routine of the ball goes left and those two players make those movements. It's just a really simple pattern to get kids moving in the right place and give them out on the ball a couple of different options. Most teams fail to play out from the back because of a lack of options. And then if the options aren't there, then the player panics, they end up just kicking the ball anywhere and that's when you lose possession. So practice simple routines like this over and over again. Make sure that as you're doing it, each player moves on to a new role so they understand the entire system. If you start to pigeonhole kids and put the left back to just do all the left back passes and all the left back receiving, then they don't understand the movements and the timings and everything else that the other players are making. So after each round or after a few turns, make sure that players are moving to different positions within the pattern and then repeat. Once you have a few patterns that the kids are now comfortable with and they understand, you can start to bring these into practice at goal kicks from training. So anytime you're in a training game and the ball goes out for a goal kick, regardless of what happens before or after, just explain to the kids that you want to see that routine to get the ball back in play. Now, the other team that are playing against them will understand the routine. They'll have seen the pattern before. So it's even more important that things are done correctly and things are done quickly. But if the man on the ball has got more than one option, you can still find a way out to play from the back. By doing this from goal kicks during games, it's a nice reset point. It gives time for players to get into the right position, for you to reinforce some coaching messages before the pattern starts, and then they play from there. But again, it's a little bit more organic than just a practiced pattern. This is a pattern that's gonna be against an opponent. They're doing it in training, and the other team, if they manage to win the ball, then some learning goes on and we can stop and explain what went wrong or why. So the next part to playing out from the back is movement and triggers. This is slightly different to patterns and routines because movements and triggers are based on what's happening around the pitch and sometimes will not become part of a pattern, but sometimes they will. So if we look at the first pattern of the goalkeeper playing the ball out to the left back, and then the left back has got two options to play into a central midfielder or to play down the line. The other movements and triggers that we're now looking for are things such as the goalkeeper slides across the left-hand side of the pitch to offer a backwards pass in case the two preferred options aren't available. The goalkeeper is taught that there is a trigger of when that left back receives the ball, he slides across to support him. It might be the goalkeeper that's played the pass himself, 
but it might be that another player has played the pass to the left back. The goalkeeper makes the same move every time. They slide across, they support behind the ball, and that is a trigger. So when you see the left back get the ball, I need you to slide to the left and make sure you're available for it. So for instance, another trigger is if the two forward passes aren't available and the left back decides to play back to the goalkeeper, which is absolutely something that will happen during playing out from the back, then what do the other players do? On your goalkeeper receiving the ball on the left side of the pitch, we need movement from the players on the right hand side of the pitch. Those players can drop deep towards the ball. Maybe a central player needs to come short and make sure he's available for the pass to feet. A right back or a right winger might have to get out wide to offer a diagonal pass and a centre back might literally come alongside the goalkeeper to offer a very simple horizontal pass across the goal to make sure that we can still find a way forward. Now we're just talking about one example here but the absolute must is for you to get kids around the tactics board and get them to understand which triggers and which movements coincide together. So if the ball goes into the right back what triggers am I looking for as a coach and what movements the players need to make to get into the right position to receive the ball from him. If the ball goes back to the goalkeeper, what does that trigger? Which movements from which players? And make sure not only have you explained that, but then kids can physically show you with markers or with a pen so you know that they really do comprehend the triggers and the movements. The next part we're going to look at is methods. Now there are dozens of methods for playing out from the back. And it's very rare that you'll see teams play the same pattern every single time. They have to have a few different routines that they can run to get the ball out from the back. But the methods that we're going to look at involve changing shape or changing your formation to make sure that we can guarantee a few things. One of the first guarantees that we need is width. We have to make sure that we've got as much width as possible to be able to stretch the other team and make the press as difficult as possible. The second thing we need to make sure is that we've got depth. Now that sometimes comes from centre-backs dropping towards the goalkeeper, it comes from midfield players dropping into deeper positions, even dropping as like a third centre-back to help you play out from the back. What you might find is that the formation that you prefer to play from an attacking point of view doesn't actually suit playing out from the back that well, so you might have to get a little bit creative with how your formation and a playing out from the back system will either blend together or you may have to change your attacking formation to improve your chances of being able to play out from the back. Here's an example of how a back four would play out from the back. So that involves two centre backs dropping deep towards the edge of the six yard box. That involves the two full backs, the left back and right back, coming really nice and wide and keeping a little bit of height to give us some forward passes. And it relies on at least one, if not two midfielders dropping in towards the ball where they can receive the ball directly from the goalkeeper or offer support to one of those back four players too. The next message for playing out the back is to stick with it. It takes a long time to get kids to understand principles, to understand triggers, to build technique, to get the movements right. And whilst they're doing all that, they will make a heck of a lot of mistakes. So you need to stick with it. You need to trust that it does work in the end, but it's a long process and it takes a lot of work, effort and energy from you and from your players. I've seen coaches abandon their principles after literally a couple of weeks of trying it. It isn't quite working. They revert back to long ball football and they give up just because it's not working over a very short and quick period of time. So make sure you stick with it, keep giving it a try, but most importantly, help the kids stick with it. If a kid makes a mistake and they've tried the right thing, but it didn't quite work, or they made a mistake because they didn't quite understand something, then don't tell them that they've made the mistake. Tell them that you like what they were doing, you really like the intention, and give them some tips and some guidance, but make sure that they understand that what they are doing is in the right zone and they're thinking the right things. Hopefully, after a prolonged period of time of you working with individuals, working in units and getting them to understand these patterns and movements, then you will hopefully get your kids playing out from the back more regularly. But even some of the best teams in the world will get caught out sometimes by a high pressing team or by a team that have already seen your plan executed two or three times. So they start to guess where you're going next. It works and they steal the ball and score. The next part to playing out from the back is dribbling. And most people associate playing out from the back with five, six, seven, eight, 15 passes that are very short and sharp, that tiki taka style of football as it's known. But there's absolutely no reason that players can't dribble with the ball when playing out from the back. And actually, once you've run a pattern two or three times, or once your players have started to play out from the back, the opposing team and the pressing team might stop running at individual players who've got the ball. They might just start to try and cut off the options. So we'll show you here how dribbling can actually get you out of trouble. The ball goes out to the right back. The right back's typical option would be to go down the line to his winger or inside to his central midfielder. 
The opposing team cut off those two passes and don't actually put any real pressure on the ball. The right back then dribbles and drives forward with the ball to keep the attack flowing forward. And as he does that, we see second moves and different players coming into spaces. And then the playing out from the back can carry on or then the passing sequence can resume. But just because a player is dribbling with the ball, it doesn't mean that they aren't playing out from the back. Obviously, this has to be well-timed and well-guided by the coach, but it's also important that the movements and the triggers and the work you do around your tactics board is all part of this. So make sure they understand when to pass, but when not to, how to pass, and most importantly, when a dribble can get you out of trouble, but also when a dribble will get you into trouble. And as a recap, guys, here's some do's and don'ts on playing out from the back. Do practice technique all the time. Make sure kids are receiving the ball as well as passing the ball. Passing is not just about sending the ball to someone else. It's about receiving passes as well. The more comfortable your kids get on passing and receiving, the better they will get at playing out from the back. Do make sure you practice patterns and routines. Even if they feel a little bit scripted and a little bit obvious, it's important that kids start to build a foundation of where to move and when to move. Don't give up just because something's not working. If kids are trying the right things and it's not quite coming off in games, then stick with it and keep working hard in training. I promise you it might take a little bit longer depending on the age and the experience of your kids, but all teams can get there if they're trying the right things and doing the right things most of the time. Do have a plan B. Make sure there's an alternative and a different option for kids if things aren't quite working, but make sure that's been reinforced to the kids. They understand it and they know it. Don't drop it on them at the last minute. Practice it as part of your training. So here's all the things that we're going to try in training. Here's all the things that we're going to do. And then if it doesn't work, here's plan B and how we're going to put it into practice if plan A doesn't work. And don't discourage dribbling if it's done at the right time, if it keeps your team moving forward, and if the other team are cutting off passing options, then do encourage kids to run with the ball to get the ball out from the back. But make sure that kids understand that it doesn't just become all dribbling, and dribbling at the wrong time is very, very dangerous. Dribbling at the right time can be very useful. We hope you found this video useful, guys. Check out lots more of our content on our channel, and please consider subscribing if this is the kind of stuff you're looking for. I'll see you in the next one.